We are all responsible to come and take part and to face this this century, this deal of the century, which is which aims at ending at the Palestinian cause, and basically Al Quds Day will be a day to face the deal of the century in order to keep the Palestinian cause, in order to keep on the issue of Al Quds and to preserve Al Quds and to preserve and and support the rights of the Palestinians and the rights of the people of the region. And therefore, this event is a great event that will be held. And this should have all our attention. This should have all our interests and our concern. Usually, in the Islamic Republic of Iran, we have a lot of uh, participation on this day. And in many capitals of the world, there are several protests and participation of the people and that there is much care and attention given to this day because of Al-Quds, because of the Palestinian cause, because they are today facing one of the greatest conspiracies of ending and presence and existence and rights in order for in or, by the U.S. and it's taking advantage of its hegemony in the region and taking advantage of the rifts and divisions in our our region and the so-called Arab Spring. But of course, before I go into our main event, the 25th of May, I would like in this context to say perhaps early, I would like to um, support and condole all the people of the region and everyone. And we would like to highly salute the Palestinian position, the position which is resilient, which is steadfast, which the even all factions of the Palestinians, even the Palestinian Authority, Palestinian factions, the Palestinian people, wherever they were, who stood against the so-called economic summit, summit which will be held in Manama, in Bahrain, their refusal of this summit and this uh, conference and their refusal to attend and to <clears throat> take part in this summit and their boycotting of this uh, economic gathering is very significant. This is a very important position. This is the position of the king, if we may say, the owner of the issue, usually in the Palestinian cause. When we take a position and we have a certain stance, that we are told, are you the ones who are in their place? Now, now this is the time where the people of Palestine are taking the right cause, this is the right stance. This is the true unifying stance for the Palestinians in order to boycott the summit in Bahrain. This is one of the first steps in order to face the deal of the century. We would also like to uh, condole and salute the position of the clerics in Bahrain and the people in Bahrain and the political factions in Bahrain, political groups who have also expressed, whether in their statements or in the various forms of popular expression, to say that they refuse that Bahrain and Manama specifically is the land that holds the first step towards the deal of the century, which will eventually, which is up to, aims eventually to end the Palestinian cause. Of course, we will continue the, these words and this talk on Palestine on the day of Al-Quds. And therefore, what is linked to issues related to Palestine <clears throat> and Al-Quds and developments in the region and mainly the tension that we have seen in the region in the U.S.-Iranian issue and what the Islamic Republic of Iran is undergoing these days, the various sanctions and pressure and various uh, also uh, uh, analysis that we have on these developments. Uh, 
uh, these are issues. Of course, we are looking, following up these this issues step by step, and there's various embassies, foreign embassies, that are following this issue up as well, and many of them that are trying to understand our position as Hezbollah in the, in the past few weeks. All of this will be elaborated, will be explained on the day of Al-Quds, because I believe that what is happening in the area of the Persian Gulf is, and what targets the Islamic Republic of Iran and this, the points of strength is also linked to the deal of the century. Today, I would like to speak of the occasion in itself, the 25th of May, Liberation Day, and some of the issues linked to the Syrian um, issue. And if we come back to this event, of course, we are looking at a historic day, a great historic national day for Lebanon, for the region. This is also a great historic day for all the developments, and especially in the developments on the Arab-Israeli struggle and conflict. What happened on the 25th of May 2000 had strategic results. It had great impact on the military, on the security, and the psychological, and the moral, and the political, and the cultural, and all the equilibrium, and all this conflict in the region. If we go from the beginning, first of all, we would like to thank with all uh, gratitude and all saluting, we want to thank the group of people who had a great sacrifice, and their sacrifices had a great impact on this victory. Specifically, we are talking about the martyrs, all the martyrs. We're talking about the families of the martyrs. We're talking about the wounded. We're talking about the prisoners, those who spent their young day life in detained in Israeli prisons, and we thank God that most of them were freed, except some of the very few files that we, um, for some of our brothers, which we must also follow up and look at, and also those who disappeared, and the families of those who also disappeared, even the fighters, the families of the fighters, of all the factions and all the movements and all the parties, political parties, and all the people, all those who had patience, who had sacrifice, uh, sacrificed much and suffered much throughout the resistance and all the supporters and those who backed, whether in their words or in their prayers or in their uh, financial support, and any sort of support that the resistance has been given throughout the years of resistance and occupation. <clears throat> and of course, we, we include all the Lebanese factions, all the Lebanese groups who took part in resistance and also the security apparatus, the military institutions, the Palestinian factions, the Syrian army during its presence in Lebanon, and all those who have sacrificed and who have stood with Lebanon. We also need to thank all those who have stood with us since 1982 till the year 2000, who continue to stand with us and was a great partner in this victory, whether politically or financially or economically, and have given all the facilities and have given all the protection and all the support and backing. And specifically, I cannot limit, of course, I cannot say someone is more, there isn't a priority, but there are two main states that have given this support, the Islamic Republic of Iran and the Arab Syrian Republic. One of the main results, we have very little time, I want to be can concise, one of the main and significant results which has been the result of this lib liberation and has also become stronger throughout the days is the building of a, a balance of strength here in Lebanon in the year 2000, after the year 2000, it was very clear that Lebanon has a force which enforced upon the Israeli army to withdraw, humili humiliate it, 
unconditionally and did not get anything. They did not hold any measures. They did not get any reward without any sort of conditions. They were by force forced to withdraw from Lebanon. They were uh, driven to withdraw from Lebanon. Everything we had said at that time, take the results of the victory, what happened, some people had said that it was a result of some agreements underneath the table, that it was the Israeli implementation of Resolution 425. These are all issues that were lies. These are all issues that were false and baseless lies that have nothing to do with the reality on the ground. The entire world has admitted, even the Israelis themselves, they admitted that what happened on the 25th of May was a defeat. It was a complete defeat for the Israeli enemy and what is a clear victory, a clear triumph and great triumph for Lebanon and the Lebanese people and for the resistance in Lebanon and for the army in Lebanon and for all those who took part in achieving this great achievement, this great victory and triumph. <clears throat> And based on this, we see that they have seen that there, as a result, we have a great force that was able to bring on this victory and this defeat upon the Israelis. And therefore, no one could look at Lebanon as the weak point in the Israeli-Arab struggle, and that it is the, the, the point of weakness in the body of the nation of the entire region. This had ended at that point. And today, everyone looks at Lebanon as a place where there is a great point of strength and there is a great force. I am not the one who is claiming this issue. You can look at what the Israeli officials are saying, the Israeli enemy, what they are saying, their media, and their, their journalists, their study centers, their scientific centers, and their conferences that they hold throughout the years, uh, every year, and their maneuvers, their measures that they have been taking on the border. All these stress the point that the Israelis look at Lebanon and they deal with Lebanon around the clock that it is a great power, that there is a power, there's a strength, that there is a force in Lebanon that they should reckon with. And they are looking and they call it a strategic threat or a central threat. I will come back to the issue of threat, but uh, the admittance of the Israelis of this force, the entire world, of course, admits to this force, the U.S. admits to this force, this point of strength, and therefore they all discuss how they can get rid when they speak of Hezbollah, for instance, as a backbone, as a point of strength for the strength of Lebanon, the power of Lebanon that has been realized after the year 2000, they talk about or they, about how they can get rid of Hezbollah. They talk about assassinations. They talk about sanctions. They talk about isolation. They talk about blacklisting. They even talk about a full-scale war. And all this was possible but is Hezbollah was also able to resist and stop all these conspiracies and all these struggles and uh, crises. And even the enemy admits to this issue and this great transformation that occurred in Lebanon after the year 2000. This is the result, and this has been strengthened and reiterated in the victory of 2006. Today, the Israelis are saying that this victory, specifically, specifically Hezbollah, is a strategic threat, that it is a central threat for the Israelis. Of course, I would like to say this is, we thank them for this certificate. This is an issue that we um, that we are uh, uh, that we admit to, of course, and I would like to con transfer this to our own national words. For us, as Lebanese, when the Israeli says and considers us a strategic threat, they want to try to say or provoke the world against us, but we, if you want to 
take this from our side, we consider this a positive issue. What they call a threat, a strategic threat, we call it a force of deterrence, a force of protection, a force of defense and uh, confrontation. This strength of uh, deter deterrence and strength of uh, defense and therefore Hezbollah represents from this point of uh, strength that they are a um, a power that will be able to deter the Israeli enemy from realizing any of its creed or to practice any of its violations or threats or to implement any of its threats you understand we all know that the Israelis are trying to steal our land, they're trying to steal our waters, they're trying to steal our oil. Of course, we see the Israelis up until Today, they discuss many of the points that are very significant for us. There are strategic issues like the Shaba farms. And the significance for us, it's very, it's a strategic point, it's a strategic security point for us as a nation, also on the issue of maritime borders and the oil, the, the drilling of, of uh, the exploitation of the oil reserves and the natural gases. The Israelis have their threats and they are trying by force to enforce upon Lebanon its choices and the government in Lebanon and to take greedily steal our natural resources. This, but this strength, this, this force has stood in its face. And is this force, as the Israeli has admitted, and as the Israeli enemy has tried to stop, has tried to destroy, we must know as Lebanese the significance of this strength of this power and this force that you have in order to preserve Lebanon, preserve the security of Lebanon, and preserve the natural resources of Lebanon, and the present of Lebanon, and the future of Lebanon. And we should all work together in order to maintain this point of strength, this golden uh, balance, this golden equation that we are talking about, the resistance, the army, and the people, in order to continue to face the Israeli threat as threats. And it was only through this power that we were able to deter. If you imagine, if there was, uh, the, there weren't any resistance in Lebanon, what would Lebanon have looked like had the Israeli army taken control of all our land in South Lebanon, at least? Wouldn't we have looked today of how is the uh, the U.S. president, Mr. Trump, had given perhaps south of Lebanon to the Israelis, just as he gave it to the gave the Golan Heights to the Israelis, and just as he gave the, the territories of 1948 and to the Israelis, and therefore this resistance as a great portion of. A, uh, of the force of deterrence, and force of defense, and force of confrontation is what we should try to preserve and we should try to keep by all means to preserve and take care of. And as we know, since uh, the enemy, we see that the enemy is trying with all their means to end this force. <clears throat> and therefore, we as Lebanese know what our national duty should be and what our ethical duty should be and what our interest entails us to do in in order for us to be to keep our country to keep our nation to keep our land our people our sovereignty our dignity it is important for us to be strong and to be powerful and this is an issue that we must reiterate in this on this occasion today especially in this world where we see that there is no place for international resolutions or the security council or international organizations that the only place that we see that it is only this the u.s and israeli hegemony and strength
strength and power and that they are that they try to enforce their uh, their dictates however on the other side those who stand and resist and preserve their rights and are powerful in that extent but the other sides everyone else is a victim everyone else is only has to pay the price they have to pay money and at the end of the day they will be gotten rid of by the U.S. Based on this occasion, I come to some of the other titles that are related to this. First of all, first issue is that we must reiterate on the 19th anniversary of Liberation Day that we hold on to the Shaba farms in the Kfarshuba Hills and the Lebanese side of the Ghajar village. And the statements which we heard from President Michel Aoun just yesterday on this issue is very decisive and was very clear and was very strong. And everything and with the statement that we heard also from the Lebanese army leadership who say they hold on also, and this is very significant, this is an ethical uh, position as well and in the literature of the Lebanese army that they hold hold on to Lebanon's right to liberate the Shaba farms and the Kfarshuba hills and the Lebanese part of the Ghajar village uh, uh, the ch and they will continue and would deserve all the sacrifices as they said from the army and the Lebanese troops and today we reiterate our right our natural right to this land this is our land and it is our natural right to practice resistance and all, all forms of resistance by all means in order to liberate what is left of our land the second issue is the demarcation of borders one of the main points of strength in Lebanon is that there is, and for most of the Lebanese leaders, most of the Lebanese factions support the government's position on this issue and also the resistance, the Lebanese people, all the Lebanese factions all have bargained on and they have bet on the responsibility of the government whether in preserving the land and they also look on the responsibility of this government and how it will negotiate and it will manage negotiations with the Israeli enemy in order to call for our right in this regard, what the Lebanese are calling for, what they are asking for, is a point of strength. This is a point of strength that is very important. We must understand that Lebanon is not in the position of weakness, and not one single Lebanese should believe that they are in a point side of weakness, that or their government is a weak government. No, today they should know that they, the other side fears the, the other side fears what is present in Lebanon, and they are are apprehensive to what is found in Lebanon and this is but although they are trying to steal what is happening from our oil and from our natural resources but the Lebanese can stop them I can say that the Israelis and behind them the Americans the US they know this equilibrium they know this equation they know that the, the government and it is the responsibility of the government who stands on the position of strength and posi position of not being a weak government that we have many points of strength that we can negotiate with and we can have optimism as Mr. Uh, Speaker Nabi Habiri has always said that there is optimism in this regard, so we must be optimistic and be on pain point of strength. Another point that we must look at and we must see that the most important part that the economic 
summit can lead to in Bahrain and the points that they might be dis that might be discussed in the uh, summit or some uh, points of trying to um, uh, provoke uh, people economically by sanctions or by paying more money in order to try to settle Palestinians inside Lebanon or in some areas inside Lebanon also what UNRWA is uh, is seeing from uh, uh, cutting of the uh, budget and from the funding against it and therefore we can see that on the national scale in Lebanon, all the Lebanese, although there are many points that we differ on here in Lebanon, however, all the Lebanese agree to one issue, which is they refuse the settlement, whether it is an international point or a political point or a social or economic issue. It's all, we all refuse the settlement of the refugees and also the Palestinians as well, all the Palestinian factions. Palestinian people, Palestinian refugees that are here in Lebanon are all our dear Palestinian brothers also refuse their settlement here in Lebanon and insist on their right to return, on their right to their land in Palestine, to return to their to their property inside Lebanon. So therefore, this is a point, uh, a common denominator between the Lebanese and Palestinians. We cannot say that we are all with or against settlement. And we can see that the, the threat of settlement is coming to us quickly and strongly. And this is why I call for a quick meeting. This doesn't require any sort of a dialogue table or conferences or long hours or days in order for there to be a meeting among the Palestinian and Lebanese leaders, the Palestinian factions and Lebanese leaders and uh, officials in Lebanon in order to see how we can face this threat, this threat of settlement. This is different than the, the dialogue, the committee of dialogue between the Palestinians and the Lebanese, which has many issues to talk about or discuss. Perhaps aside of that, I call, and I believe that it should be in a high level of presence, a high, a high officials, high level officials should attend this meeting. It is not enough that we have a statement from here, a statement from there, and that our Palestinian brothers have a statement. We all have these statements that are against settlement. It's not enough. But what is the plan? What is the Lebanese Palestinian cooperative plan in order to face the threat of settlement? settlement in our country, which is coming to us uh, quickly, and this is an issue that is put in the hands of the, Palestine, of the Lebanese officials, first, the, first and foremost, and also our Palestinian brothers in the, in the factions, and for them to be able to stress and to face this issue as a national threat as well. The fourth point. The Syrian displays or the Syrian refugees in Lebanon also, this issue requires that we talk about this issue for a whole hour, but only quickly. We need to go into details, but now I will only speak concisely. Also, I want to tell the Lebanese people. Everyone also agrees, and this is very significant, this is a common ground that we have. We're trying to look at the common grounds here between all the Lebanese. As we see, at the appearance, all the Lebanese say that they are united on one thing, that they want to help and assist our brothers, our uh, loved Syrian brothers, to return to their land. However, we perhaps differ on the method or on the way of helping, assisting them and return to their land. But in order for us to open up to each other, let's be clear and not to create some issues or we say that we have common ground, but we don't. But the main issue is a political issue. 
The issue is related to elections in Lebanon. It's, it's related to the upcoming Syrian presidential election because the presidential, uh, Mr. Bashar Assad's presidency ends in next October or November. And therefore, despite the fact of Astana or Geneva, uh, whether there was a constitutional committee or not, whether there was a uh, political solution or not, uh, there will be presidential elections that will be held on their natural on, uh, on time inside Syria. There is U.S. insistence, Western insistence, and some of the Arab states. It must be clear to all of you, for all the Lebanese people, for those who say that they are with the return of Syrian refugees, and what we are suffering today is our common sufferings. This is an issue. The Syrian refugees are suffering from the uh, the uh, this displacement, although some of the Syrians that have uh, clearly fixed their situation, they have stores, they have houses, they, uh, and they are at ease in our country, and there are still very few, but most of the Syrian refugees are living and suffering the dire situation of refugees. The Lebanese also as well are suffering from this issue in all the factions and all the sects. There was one side when some groups said that there will be a certain, they gave the issue a sectarian stance or a sectarian significance or an issue that has to do with um, different areas or different parts. But today we know that all the Lebanese in all sides and all areas are suffering from the repercussion of this displacement and they, this is an issue that has to do with the economy, the social society, and we see every day, we are listening to the news, we see what's happening in our country. Why should the sufferings continue? The sufferings of the Syrian refugees, why should they continue? Why should the suffering of the Lebanese in bearing all this burden of the of displacement and on their country. This is the truth. The U.S., the West, and some of the Arab Persian Gulf states do not want the Syrian refugees to return to their country at least before the presidential election inside Syria. This is clearly a political reason, though it has nothing to do with the humanitarian issues, because a humanitarian context would require that this person returns to his land, returns to their families, returns to their uh, country, returns to their nation, and has nothing to do with security issues. All those who have returned to Syria are living at peace with the rest of the Syrian but how, what some of the Lebanese officials have said that there are some assassinations or some um, uh, operations against those refugees who have returned from Lebanon, that there have been killing of these refugees. I can tell them that this is not true. These are baseless lies. And I would also like them to go back and try to see if their information is is false or correct, because this will try to stop many people of returning, and this has to do with a great security apparatus, which is the general security, which has taken the responsibility of this file of the return of the Syrian refugees. They have all the information. This is only trying to terrorize and to stop the, the Syrian refugees from returning to Lebanon. This only helps the political reason that I spoke about earlier, but the issue of the return of the Syrian refugees refugees only years ago, and in a meeting with President Bashar Assad, I asked him very honestly and clearly, do you want the Syrian refugees in Lebanon to return to Syria so we can understand and be very honest and clear because we are friends, we are allies, and we don't want anyone to hurt us or to harm us in a way. We want you to be honest. Do you want their return? And he said, yes, honestly, we want them all to return to their country, and we're ready to give assistance to all the Syrian refugees who return to Syria. What is the deterrence today? What is stopping them from going back home? It is only a political reason. Is it acceptable that the Lebanese people, the Lebanese government, the Lebanese officials, that they succumb to this political dictation, a dictate from the U.S.?
U.S. and they take all the economic issues, they put aside all the economic interests and all our uh, social interests only because the U.S. believes this is a an important political issue and enforces Lebanon, and they are prohibiting, and I say it clearly, they are prohibiting the Syrians from returning. I cannot say that, no, at least they can tell them that whoever wants to return, there's voluntary return. Those who don't want to return, they are free to stay. But no, they are actually prohibiting them. They are terrorizing the Syrian people and trying to prohibit their return to Syria. And unfortunately, some of the Lebanese officials are practicing this issue. And they are also trying to give them guarantees and give of trying to stay rewards for trying to stay in Lebanon. Of course, no one, not one single political force in Lebanon can say that, no, we want to settle these, these Syrians inside Lebanon. We don't want the Syrian refugees to return. No one dares to say this. If they say this, if they feel this, they can only keep it uh, behind closed doors. They do not say this openly. But everyone says openly that they want to return the Syrian refugees to, to their country. I believe after the talk of the budget, the uh, uh, fiscal year in, Le in Lebanon, all the sides should come and agree because the uh, regional and international scene is clear. There are many conferences, uh, several meetings, the calls that have been held between all the world powers and all international countries. It is very clear for us. It is uh, clear for the last few months, if it had not been in the last few years, but we can say at least in the last few months, that it is clear to the Lebanese officials, to the Lebanese uh, factions, that there is a threat of settlement. But how do we deal with this? And how do we look at it? Because it is a national issue, a significant national issue for all of the Lebanese. The last point that I would like to mention when it comes to the issue of fighting corruption in Lebanon and the issue of the uh, budget in Lebanon. I will talk about this in the, in the upcoming minutes and what minutes we have left. I can say what we will be part of the fight against corruption and try to stop any sort of mismanagement on the issue of the, of the budget and uh, expenses of the government. This is an issue that requires time. It requires more information. It requires that we have tools. We have uh, more tools in order to be able to face this battle. Every single battle or time has its own files, has its own uh, measures or its own tools and instruments that we take, uh, that we use in order to fight. And I said from the beginning, this issue needs a lot of patience. Of course, I know that in a week or two, Everyone will call on the government to say, what have you done, or on us, I'm saying, what have you done on this issue with regards of, uh, of uh, fighting corruption? I said that the fight, this battle against corruption is even more difficult than the battle against the Israelis and the liberation in 2000. And we can say that perhaps achieving something in the fight against corruption will take more time. And therefore, like I said, it needs more time. It needs uh, that everyone shoulders responsibility requires more time and cooperation and coordination amongst all sides before we come and deal with the issues of uh, of the nation but it's not important it's not enough that we have one side or one faction or two factions or three factions that are fighting this corruption this requires a national movement this requires a national strategy it requires a strategy from all the Lebanese people and we say that we are at the forefront in this battle and we are ready to take on our responsibilities in this battle of fighting corruption in the last uh, 
In a few uh, months, we can say that Hezbollah was able to reach a national position, was able to reach uh, or was able to bring on an atmosphere, a certain national atmosphere, in order to face the uh, corruption and the um, haphazard spending of the government. And we can say that there are significant points that the people are thinking about, or that people are concerned about and uh, many are working on and that we as a f that officials are called on to uh, address and uh, and fix we have also in the last year prepared several files and several issues some of them have we have presented to the government uh, we are saying we are waiting till after the discussions on the budget are done and the statements are given these issues are related also to fighting corruption we have many files that are ready we're also waiting till after the discussions the cabinet uh, meetings on the budget because it is more important for us to focus on the budget now and then after Words. We will give those files to the Justice uh, Department and we will work on those. We have also worked on uh, recommendations, several proposals as well in our committee and our block and our parliamentary block, which will be given, will be discussed in the uh, parliament uh, on many issues uh, related on the, to, uh, for example, employment in the government and to other uh, privatization issues in the government and uh, to see how we can stop uh, uh, corruption or face corruption and uh, how we can uh, manage the uh, expenses and the spending of the government. We have also decided to support the other proposals of other parliamentary blocs. Uh, what is important for us here is to reach a, a solution, to reach a result. It's not important for us who gives a proposal and who is uh, giving suggestions for results. What is important is the result. It's not important to say that Hezbollah was the one that uh, achieved this victory or, uh, or is the one that is fighting corruption here or there. What is important for us here today is that corruption is prohibited and this issue is closed, that doors are closed to corruption and any sort of mismanagement in the government on the issue of the ministries uh, from the beginning, uh, the ministries where Hezbollah was responsible and the ministries that where Hezbollah officials took, uh, we, I told them from the beginning, in your ministries, it is very clear that, for instance, the um, the Ministry of Sports and Youth, where uh, Hezbollah official is, has taken the ministry, and also another one which has to do with the uh, management of uh, the government, parliamentary issues. We can say that and also in the uh, Ministry of Health, we can clearly claim, we can say clearly that there is no corruption in those ministries, the Ministry of Sports and, uh, and Youth and the Ministry of uh, Parliamentary Management. Uh, these two ministries specifically, they said that there was our brothers, uh, the, our ministers in those two, they said they there was no uh, corruption and mismanagement. But it's important to say and tell the Lebanese for those who have any information or intelligence that have to do with corruption in these two ministries, they can come clearly and give them to Hezbollah, to give them to the ministries and or their advisors perhaps in the ministries as well and they uh, should bear responsibility of taking these also, I would also like to address the rest of the political factions, uh, all the ministries, in their ministries. Since we are saying that we are united and we all agree to facing corruption, instead of coming, uh, we, as long as you say that you are serious in this issue, then every single minister should use, should make use of their presence as a minister in the ministry in order to fight corruption, in order to stop any sort of mis mismanagement. This, of course, does not does not mean that the rest of the political factions do not have this responsibility. 
but it is the minister himself who is responsible first and foremost. Uh, also, for some, uh, there are some uh, files uh, that we have heard in the media and uh, some of the procedures that we have seen in the finance uh, ministry, uh, specifically on the uh, judicial court, which has to do with fighting these issues related to the econ economy, to the finances, to the budget. Uh, this is a very, very significant issue in order to end this file and try Try to see uh, where the the money has gone in the past in order for there to be a uh, government a budget uh, also the continuous loans to take on more loans on the government and more debt this will be a, a, an additional burden to the uh, to the economy and of, of Lebanon. Uh, for us, it, well, there was a priority for us as Hezbollah that the budget of 2019 uh, be a significant station in order for us to begin to fight corruption. This is our chance. This is our, our opportunity. This is our first main opportunity. And all those who come to deal with or negotiate the budget say that they know that this is a, uh, a, a great opportunity for the Lebanese. This is also another common ground for all the Lebanese because the economic situation is dire in Lebanon, and therefore all all of us should be able to address this issue uh, clearly. Now, it's not clear whether they will put this in the budget or keep it aside, but everyone agrees on the significance of the reform plan that have that has been put and the measures that have been put forth before Hezbollah in the, in the last period uh, of time. If you remember, we said that we must all be serious and concerned about this negotiation. This should not be something that we do quickly, only to end it. Everyone should know that this is an existential um, budget, and it will, and we will base uh, uh, the next budgets and the future, and economic and financial future of our country on this budget. We are saying that we will also bear responsibility in discussing all uh, the budget, and we have the many advisors, of course. The leadership in Hezbollah has made a lot of effort and also have taken our ministers as well to the ministries, uh, the cabinet uh, meetings, ready and prepared with their files and their uh, recommendations and proposals. We have also said that if the meetings are going to be held inside, the cabinet that there should not be talk in the media, there should not be a negative uh, atmosphere outside the cabinet meetings because this will lead us to unjust uh, decisions uh, among in the cabinet. We have also uh, uh, kept to our part of this issue. Not one of our members of parliament or ministers have come to, uh, to hold a press conference and say we agree to this, we agree to that. We have only given our position, our senses inside the cabinet meetings, although there was some uh, news that, or information that was, uh, some of it was right, some of it was, was false, uh, we heard in the media. But in, we will not comment on these issues, but of course, after negotiations of the budget, if it is very important for our ministers to come and explain or give explanations on the reality of the position of Hezbollah, then this will happen, uh, God willing, if we need to uh, give explanations or explain issues to the Lebanese people. In the meetings in the cabinet that is, that is, that is being held in the presidential palace, we did not uh, obscure or put any obstacles to the declaration of the budget, but there are very significant points that we refuse, and we continue to refuse because we say it 
touches on the, the limited economy, uh, the poverty line or those who are below the poverty line or those who have limited income. Um, therefore, we refuse that they touch upon these salaries. And it's, it's, it's now there, we believe that it's a very important time. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to cooperate on these points specifically. I would like also in this regard to call on everyone, only based on my responsibility. From the beginning, there were some uh, rumors only, there were only fears and rumors. And we see now, even when we came to tell, the uh, to reassure the Lebanese that all the political groups have said we will not we will refuse any uh, taxes or measures on the salaries of those who have limited upcom outcome in the budget that will come out of the cabinet. Unfortunately, there will be some measures that will affect and impact those with limited income. I would call on all the political factions in, for them to live on to their promises that they have given from the beginning of the, of the discussions uh, because in the cabinet, in the parliament as well, we will not be silent as we were silent in the meetings of the cabinet. In the parliament, no, we will negotiate in the committee of the economy, the uh, finance committee, and we will also outside the cabinet, we will openly discuss this issue and talk about it because we refuse some points that will come out of the budget. We, of, but of course, we hope that it will be issued soon. Uh, the Speaker Nabi Hibiri has also uh, promised the Lebanese that he will also work on uh, uh, giving uh, uh, approval to the budget inside the, the parliament as well. And also beside the issue of the uh, budget, we must also work on the sidelines and other meetings <clears throat> in order to continue with the reforms. And we must also begin from now discussing issues related to the budget of 2020. We cannot say that once we have the budget of 2019, we are safe, we are uh, in a safe position. I cannot say that this is important. This is only a step forward. Uh, of course, I don't want to give just quick examples of the um, uh, reform plan. I cannot give them today. I will talk about them in other positions. This is an issue and a concern for all the Lebanese that we must look at uh, clearly and seriously and openly. Uh, finally, I would like to congratulate everyone once more on this event, on this occasion, this historic event that has established a, the time and the era of victories and has closed as the last Israeli troop and last Israeli soldier left Lebanon and closed the gate. They have gone, and today they are building walls. And they are building uh, doors, they are building uh, artificial hills, and all sort of deterrents because they under have understood clearly the truth about the force that is present inside Lebanon. They have closed, and also this victory, as the Israeli soldier closed the gate, finally, after they left Lebanon, the liberty of the liberation of 2000 has also closed the gate of defeat and has clo opened the doors of victory openly uh, for us if we take care and preserve this strength and this power, and we have faith in God Almighty, and we have uh, unity and uh, uh, cooperation among amongst us and we have national and ethical concern, we will continue to be able to deter the Israelis and not let the Israelis or the U.S. enforce their conditions on Lebanon to try to take anything from our resources, either in our oceans or our land. We will not go back to the era of Israel. Definitely, we will not go to the U.S. era. Lebanon will continue to be in the era of sovereignty and the golden position of strength.